thank you very much for the kind invitation to join you at this first Capital Market Conference of the Nigerian Exchange Limited in its new shape and form. This is probably the most exciting time in the history of the capital markets in Nigeria. Uh, you've just successfully completed the demutualization process, which now fully commercializes the functions of the exchange as a corporate entity, and importantly, separating the regulatory function to prevent conflicts of interest. And the NGX can now focus on its core uh, functions of exploring new opportunities, leveraging strategic partnerships, and transacting business to deliver profit. Also, the NGX Group has very successfully listed its shares on the main board of the exchange, enabling institutional investors globally and the Nigerian public to now invest in the exchange group. And there are strong foundations to build on. The NGX being the foremost multi-asset securities exchange in Africa's largest economy. There's also much room to play and even greater potential. Your primary market has the largest concentration of young people, which opens up opportunities to replace the aging current players to which uh, Mr. Bukwala has already alluded. Many times over, we can actually replace these are 50 to 55, 50 to 60 uh, known investors many, many times over now with a new uh, population of much younger people. Besides, you are now positioned to reverse the trend of declining IPOs in capital markets worldwide with offerings that are more business oriented and less constrained, uh, with a much less constrained exchange such as you have now. And so it is possible to do much more. We now have greater room for redefining the exchange for international competitiveness. This is especially so as is currently being done by you reviewing the governance framework and of course the profit orientation of the exchange also means that the investors can look forward to seeing more fast growing companies listed on the exchange. Every investor, at least all smart investors, must now be looking at how to become a part of the miracle of the Nigerian unicorns. The five or six, even probably seven now, indigenous Nigerian companies that became billion dollar enterprises since 2015 in the midst of two recessions. By the way, I know of course that you are working on that. And the theme of this conference, uh, the future already capital market uh, innovating for Nigeria's sustainable recovery, I believe speaks very eloquently to all of these huge and exciting prospects. But as is the case with all exciting opportunities, they come with their own challenges. You are not functioning in a vacuum. You operate within a macroeconomic environment that is in itself challenged. And a global economy in the throes of economic convulsions such as has never been seen before, at least in the previous three or four decades. Supply chain disruptions, rising inflation, and the threat of even further lockdowns on account of the new variants of the COVID-19 uh, virus. I think that if history is any guide, it is in the midst of uncertainties and disruptions that the new era of capital market ascendancy will be birthed. And I'm glad that the NGX understands this interpretation of local and international developments. This is apparent from your focus on the evident silver linings in all of these clouds that we're seeing. First, with the, with the, growth of, uh, with the work of the uh, growth board of the exchange, which I understand is focusing on bringing in fast-growing companies, especially by dealing with the barriers to entry to the market, including access to finance, time to market, and of course, uh, cost of listings. The introduction of derivative products that provide more diversified opportunities for liquidity, for wealth creation, and even risk management, as well as the special purpose acquisition companies that you have, which create less restrictive requirements for M&A type investments that can now be listed on the exchange. You have recognized, I think, from your strategy that this effort must be collaborative. 
the trade groups, the chambers of commerce, and other business associations, and of course government, must play key and active roles. And while we're on that point, I think so far we must commend the Securities and Exchange Commission for its steady regulatory oversight in stress testing these products and interrogating the implications of introducing them before they are exposed to the investing public. But second is your strategic focus on technology. And again, uh, the CEO has repeated that. And this is two-pronged. Technology to bring in a new crop of young investors, many of who use only their smartphones and other such devices, primarily for engaging with commerce and banking activities today. And I think you have commendably begun the journey to digital transformation of the market, following the highly successful example of the banks and, of course, the telcos. Today, the huge retail outlets created by the telcos, with well over 100 million subscribers, and then the wide reach of banks, especially with the numerous financial inclusion initiatives that have been made within the past few years, probably put us at the most auspicious moment for digitizing the capital market to bring in millions of new young retail investors. I think it's noteworthy that you're already leveraging on your existing digital platforms, your X Factbook and the X Mobile, not just to bring in this new generation of investors, but also en to enable access to data that would enhance investor decisions. The second prong of that technology drive, which I understand is being driven by the NGS Technology, uh, technology Board, is attracting the tech companies the present and future tech unicorns to the market as a viable option for, cap for raising capital. And, the, uh, and, and His um, Royal Highness, the Emir, just referred to that. And at the same time, giving more investors the opportunity to benefit from the phenomenal growth of these companies. There's a great deal of work here to be done by the regulator, primarily to enable faster and less cumbersome access to the market for an understandably impatient class of potential investors who have other options that may be faster on the draw, especially foreign uh, options, the opportunities for raising uh, capital from foreign markets. But we must work gingerly to ensure that where policy may be involved, we enhance and not encumber the ability of these companies to raise capital quickly and efficiently. This, of course, will call for monitoring successful for monitoring and mirroring successful global best practice. In the wake of the urgent imperatives and, and the implications of climate change, climate finance has become central to a lot of our conversations on finance and capital markets too. The federal government and the NGX have since 2017 taken the initiative of issuing the first African sovereign green bond and the first climate bond certified sovereign bond. And we became only the fourth nation in the world to do so. The value of Nigeria's green bonds market has now hit $136 million. Within three years, with four issuances recorded since the first issuance by the federal government, as I said, in 2017. And it continues to grow. I'm aware that in keeping with our thought leadership in this area, the NGX has already produced guidelines for sustainability reporting, that is the disclosure uh, and communication of environmental, social and governance goals, as well as a company's progress towards them. Sustainability reporting is mandatory for premium uh, board listed companies. And it's even more important, especially as we seek to attract foreign institutional investors for whom sustainability reporting is becoming a norm. In any event, the benefits of sustainability reporting are extremely useful for corporates as they improve corporate reputation, build consumer confidence, and even increase innovation. In that same rubric uh, of socially responsible and SDG compliant investment products, we must also leverage on our experience with issuing uh, Skook bonds. The Skook bonds are considerably deepened, they have considerably deepened our capital markets, and of course the CEO has also referred to that. And proceeds have been particularly beneficial to us as a government 
in improving uh, our sources of finance for infrastructure projects. There's a great deal of room here for bringing in much, many more retail investors. Also, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement offers exciting new prospects for cross-border listings and activity and the formation of long-term capital. Your brand campaign, the stock of which Africa is made of, which was well commended by Mr. President in his keynote at that launch, is not only imaginative, but is bold and focused. And I think of importance now is that the NGX must work with, with all of our, our, our AFC, our CTA uh, um, negotiators, especially as we progress towards setting the rules in the service sector. And I think that this is particularly important. The NGX must see itself as a critical player, even in the negotiations now of the AFCTA. We're at a point where we're looking now at negotiating service rules. We've looked at rules of origin already. So this is the time to come into, the, into play, you know, along with government uh, negotiators, to get the very best deals possible from all our partners all over Africa. I've spoken earlier of the role of the macroeconomic environment, and of course, the regulatory regime, in realizing the huge opportunities we, we now have in the capital markets. But this issue is crucial. Government policy and action are important, and there's no way of overemphasizing that. The NGX in 2020 was the highest performing exchange, we're told, with a return of 50% on the all share index when compared with 98 other exchanges tracked globally by Bloomberg. Yet in 2021, so far, the exchange has experienced a significant withdrawal of foreign participation, as well as domestic institutional participation, leading to a meager year-to-date performance of something in the order of about 7.65%. To correct this and usher in the return of foreign domestic institutional participation, I must say that it is clear that government, and, and, I, and I believe that all of government agencies and regulators in our financial system, such as the Central Bank, uh, the SEC, PENCOM, among other key stakeholders, realize that we must work with the NGX to ensure that the excessive risk premium within the market is abated and that foreign investors are reassured of foreign exchange mechanisms and other regulations that will enable them to channel their resources in and take their resources out with the least possible uh, constraints. This government has shown its commitment, and I, and I believe that uh, that is evident. Uh, we've shown our commitment to working with the NGX and to working with the capital markets, especially, of course, uh, with the signing of the demutualization bill into law in 2018. And so the point of a reassuring business environment for foreign and local investors is not lost on us as a government. Indeed, our medium-term national development plan, which was, uh, which, uh, was uh, officially approved by the Federal Executive Council two Wednesdays ago, contained a robust policy planning attempt at achieving fast and sustainable growth. The objectives of the plan include establishing a strong foundation for a diversified economy, investing in critical infrastructure, enabling human capital development, and improving governance and strengthening security. It envisages that the economy will grow from about 3% this year, rising to about 6.33% in 2025. The key, of course, is in the implementation. As I say, the devil is in the details. In this case, the devil, obviously, is in implementation. And we must ensure that we exercise this devil. Now, we have a range of measures in the implementation. And of course, this range of measures include the fiscal, monetary, and trade measures. The new plan envisages an investment commitment of $348 trillion over the plan period. Government at all levels is expected to come up with $49.7 trillion naira or about 14% of that, while the private sector is expected to invest 298 trillion, or about 86%. So the role of the private sector is, clear, is, 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 is quite evident. The capital market will undoubtedly have a key role to play in mobilizing these resources. 
Next year, the federal government will further strengthen the frameworks for concessions and public-private uh, partnerships, especially as they relate to in infrastructure. The implementation of a capital pro of, of a capital of capital projects will also be further enhanced by the new Infraco, the 15 trillion infrastructure fund being set up in partnership with the private sector. Infraco will certainly help to bridge the significant portion of the infrastructure gaps. Again, the recent passage of the uh, PIA, the Petroleum Industry Act 2021, and consequently the incorporation of the NMPC itself should result in rationalization of expenditure as well as increased investments and improved output in the oil and gas industry. But also, if the NMPC makes good its plans to be listed, this will not only deepen uh, the markets hugely, but will also enhance its own governance framework. So we certainly look forward to, to the NMPC uh, fulfilling its promise of being listed within the next uh, year or two. Let me conclude by reiterating the federal government's commitment to partnership with the NGX. In any event, uh, I do not think that neither of us or either of us has a choice. Uh, the capital markets do not have a choice. The government also will not have a choice. We need the capital markets uh, for the economy and of course the capital markets needs a thriving economy for its own growth. So we expect that there will be much more consultation as we go forward. And of course, we hope that all the regulatory authorities will be joining in these consultations. I think that we have an absolutely incredible opportunity now to advance our capital markets, not just locally, but globally. Thank you very much for listening.